Well, welcome back to the live match this week, and it's a new venue for me, something a little bit different, and we're going to Medellin's Fishery. Medellin's is a venue that I've been to loads of times filming, doing features, and I've even fished a silverfish league there in the winter, but I've never actually fished it for car. I got a bit of spare time, so I thought there's an open match in the week, I'll go and uh, give it a go. We're going on the Thursday match, which is on Lambsdown. Now, for those who don't know, Lambsdown is a big water, it's a, you know, 70 pegs on there, deep, it's wild, there's a lot of wind on it, that kind of thing. Really target species are carp, they, they sort of average sort of eight pound, you know, you are looking to maybe catch a 10 pound, a 12 pound, and maybe even a 15 pound carp. Big fish, big weight. It wouldn't surprise me if we're gonna need 200 pounds to do any good whatsoever. A bit different to what I've been doing this year. I've not done any carp fishing really, so I just fancied it, I fancied going. I went there last week on a Preston day, like a, a, a shoot to show the guys all the new stuff. And I just sort of thought, well, if there's a match here in the week, I'm going to come here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to Medellin's. What about tactics? Now, you may be thinking, why are you not in the garden, Joe? Well, to be honest, it's absolutely pissing down out there. So I don't really want to do it out there. So we're having a look inside anyway. And it's nice and warm and nice and cosy. What am I going to do? How am I going to fish? Well, Medellin's is one of them venues where, because it's a big open, wet, uh, open water style venue, there's a lot of things you can probably do. You know, you could fish a method, you could fish waggly, you could fish bomb, you could fish long pole, you could fish short pole, you could fish in the edge. It's one of them places where you've kind of got to pick your weapon sort of thing and pick your plans. With big carp particularly, you've got to assess the situation when you draw your peg. You can't really go with any preconceived ideas. The reason is you could be on an end peg with the wind blowing in and you could catch down the side all day. Or you might be in the middle of the, of the pegs and you have to fish a bomb all day. So really, until we get, until we get drawn out, I don't really know what I'm going to do. So I can have a rough plan and a rough idea of, of what I need prep wise. This is my thinking and this is based on all the features and stuff that I've been on there and filming days and stuff. It could be totally wrong because like, I've got no experience of this venue in a match situation so I could be way off but whenever I've been there in the past you can see the fish out at 20 meters, 25 meters at the start of the match. Now just as a, as a quick little nugget of info a lot of the weights at Medellin's, 300 pound plus, are caught in afternoon slash evening matches. A lot of the opens there throughout the summer don't start and, and don't fish until in the afternoon. So obviously they're fishing at the best time of day to catch in the edges, hence the big weights. You know, you see these massive weights, and but it's because the match is held at the you know prime time. This match isn't going to be like that. It's going to be half ten to half three, I believe, or maybe half ten till four, whatever it is, it finishes much earlier than the normal matches. So I don't think it's going to be one of them days where we're going to catch a massive weight. I just don't. It's a bit colder now. It was only, it was only six degrees when I got up this morning. Um, it's colder. The leaves are starting to come off the trees. I think it's going to be a lower weight day, but a, a lower weight day at Medellin's will still be 150 to 200 pound. I would have thought I'd be surprised if it was less than that, just because of the size of the fish. Back to what I was about to say. So whenever I've been there doing features in the past, the fish are clearly out in the lake at the start of the session. So the fish are out there, they're cruising around, bombing around, making it almost pointless to fish the pole to start with. Because it's a big lake, the fish take time to come within range. I'm going to fish bomb and pellet for half of the match. That is my thinking. I'm going to use 8mm pellets on the bomb, pick a nice spot where I can feed it comfortably, 20 metres, something like that, um, and then fish that pretty hard for the first two and a half hours of the match probably. Um, I will set a waggler up as well, just in case, because you never know, these are big fish. It only takes a 20 minute spell where the fish come up, you see a few kicking about, chuck the waggler, you might catch two or three carp quickly. That could be 40 pound at this venue. So having a waggler set up as well is probably a good, good move. When it comes to my pole lines, I've got to make a decision here because there's loads of skimmers to catch on this venue, loads, and they're good fish as well. Like you can catch a hundred pound of skimmers at this venue if you kit yourself out. Now, I think meat would be a good option, as would four mil pellets with a, like a six mil expander on the hook. But to be honest, I kind of really want to go down the carp route. Obviously, it's going to depend where I draw. I have got some rigs set up um, that will allow me to fish for skimmers. But I kind of want to have a nice day's carp fishing. Um, it's just something I've not done all year. Um, because you can do too much in these situations. You know, you can fish your bomb, you can fish your long pole, you can fish your short pole, you can fish your edge. It's quite a lot to do that. 
could be totally wrong, but I fancy leaving the long pole in the bag. And that brings me nicely onto the short pole. Now, I know for a fact that that's where a lot of the damage gets done on this venue. The reason is it's, it's a bit of a beachy margin, so often the cart can come in and be a bit of a nightmare to catch, whereas obviously at five metres, six metres, it's a little bit deeper. The water's a little bit deeper. It's absolutely chucking it down out there, folks, by the way. And I'm going to fish eight mil pellets there. Nice and positive, for carp, I'm not worrying about skimmers or anything like that. I'm just going to fish 8 mil pellets, feeding 2s and 3s, um, and I won't even try that until later in the match. From what I've seen of this venue, like I say, the fish start out in the middle and they come in. So it almost makes it pointless being on a short pole uh, to begin with. That brings me on to the margins, and again, the margins are going to play a part. I would imagine the margins would be better on if you more towards an end peg. Um, like I say, we're definitely wind the, the year's winding down now. We've got, we, you know, there's. I still think the fishing is going to be really good, but I don't. I don't know whether we're going to have like a margin bonanza, which can happen at Meadowlands. So I'm thinking, uh, obviously, the last hour the margins could come in. Now, I've got a bit of a plan. It might not work, but like I say, it's that beachy style. And last week when we went on Warren Pool, which is a different pool, granted, but when they were coming into that shallow water, you could see the fish just mooching around really slow mouthing the ground bait, not really feeding, and they were so hard to catch. Even though there was loads of fish there, they were really hard to catch, and I hate that me. It frustrates me. So moving on to kit, I've just set up an 11-foot monster pellet waggler, like I say, with a, um, I'll probably use a four gram or a five gram pellet waggler. O18 float max mainline. Uh, I'll use O18 hook lengths and a size 16 KKH. Simple stuff. For the bomb, I've got a 10-foot superior. Um, Eight pound mainline. I've got a simple 15 gram bomb, inline bomb, the ICS ones, um, and then I'll probably use. Well, I've got them here, so I'll show you in my lovely little revolution box. Right. I've got obviously I've got a bit of a variety in here of what I can use, um, but there's two that I'll probably use the most. So I've got one here that's a size 10 KKH. Great hook. I love these. I've tied them at about. 50 centimetres, something like that. I can obviously shorten them. Nice and simple. Um, on here, I've got a size 10, and then I've got two bait bands tied together on there. Um, simple stuff, quite a long hair, because it's a big bait, and I'm gonna put two eight mil pellets in there, either the, the feed pellets, the fishery feed pellets, or two robin reds. Something big and visual. I've got this exactly the same, 019 again, with a 14 and a single bait band. So. Just if I want to fish a single pellet, I can whip that one on there as well. I've got the, the quick change bead, so I can swap between the two. And I'll do that. I'll have a couple of different hook lengths um, at the ready that I can just quickly slip on, chuck out, try it for five minutes. And if it doesn't go around, I'll pop another hook bait on. It could be um, the 8 mil and little fluoro wafter combo that I showed you on another video. It could be double pellet. It could be single pellet. It could be two red, red pellets. So it's all about changing and finding what's on the day. For the pole, for the 8 mils, um, I'm just going to use uh, an 18 or a 16 KKH, depending on how the fishing's going. They're tied up on fat line these, 0.17, that's, that's heavy stuff for me on the pole. I'm normally a, an 013 guy, but because of the venue, these are on 0.17. What's noticeable here, I tie them up to 12 inches, my carpal clamps. It's not that I'm going to use them at 12 inches, I might do. But what I like, I like to have the option of shortening them to whatever length I want. I quite like an 8 inch hook length for carp just gets the, the shot away from the fish a little bit, so I can obviously change it to eight inches. But if I wanted to fish a shallow rig, for example, I could shorten it down to six inches or four inches. So it just gives me a lot of versatility there, and it just means I don't have loads of different clems tied up. I've just got a nice selection that I can short to suit. On the, on the edge front, I'm gonna use a 12 XSH 019, strong stuff. That goes onto the rigs. Look at this. Interlock um, winder tray there in the, in the tray. Lovely little setup that. One of the new trays, one of the new winders. I'll do a video on that soon because it's a, it's a lovely, lovely setup that. Um, rig wise, for the, I've tied some long pole rigs up even if I don't intend to use them, which are just diamonds at various sizes. But for the short pole, what I'm going to use is a diamond in a 4x12, depending on the depth. If it's a bit deeper, I'll use a 4x14 diamond. Simple and strong. Nice big fat bristle. End of the day, you've got an 8 mil pellet on the end. You want something with a decent bristle and something with a bit of weight to it. For the edges, I've got some just some, some of our edge floats tied up. In the 414s, 
and I've even got something in 412 set up, just depending on depth. Nice and strong, no messing, no nonsense, edge rigs. And that's it, I've got my diamonds and I've got my edge floats. Really simple, really strong. And that goes on to the elastic as well. I've got several top kits set up. Um, the mainstay of my approach will be 15, 15 Jura slip. I've got a little Dacron connector on there. Um, obviously the side puller, my top kits are in, in disgusting state after a summer of uh, pace shallow fishing. As you can see, I've just got a power kit there with 15 in. I've got some 17 in as well for the edge. Two elastics that will do the job nicely. And that moves me on to bait. So we're going to have, we're probably going to buy a couple of bags of eight mils from the fishery. And then for the edge, I was torn for the edge. I love feeding ground bait in the edge. I've had loads of success with it over the years, places like Shearsby Valley and stuff, but I've tried it so many times at Medellin's. Last week when we went on Warren Pool, I tried it and it was just really <laughs> annoying to catch them. They were just coming in and sitting over the ground bait like that, motionless, because the water was so shallow, it was like this deep. They're just sitting there and you can't catch them when they're like that. They're just too, they're just, they, you just can't catch them. They're just, no, they're looking around. They, they're actually out, they're feeding with, you know, they're feeding with cautious when, caution when they're like that. I just think they're gonna be an absolute nightmare to catch if I get them in that situation. Same goes for like two mils and stuff like that. So I came away thinking, if I come here, I need to change up. So, could feed hard pellets, but I can't. I really fancy something different. So what I've done, um, I've got some hemp, several pints of hemp, and I'm going to mix it with some corn. Got a couple of tins of corn that I'm going to mix throughout the hemp and corn. Might be a load of rubbish, but I love hemp for carp, and I know in the autumn time it can work really well. Two reasons why I really fancy it. My dad got me a massive bucket of hemp about a year ago, and to be honest with you, I need to use it up. My dad bought me it for my river fishing and uh, I've just never had a chance to use it up, so I'm gonna, I've cooked up some of that to get rid of it, basically, and I just fancy it. I love fishing hemp, and I think that'd be a nice little change. I can lash it in, carp love it. I think it'd be a nice little change to micros and ground bait and the boring stuff. Could be wrong, and like I say, I'm gonna fish corn, double corn over the top. So that's my plan. Eight mil shore, eight mil on the bomb, hemp and corn in the edge. Um, sometimes they just want a bit of bait, and I'm hoping that that's what, what, the, what the situation is here. So there you go. That's the rigs, that's the tackle, that's the bait that we're going to use. Sorry it wasn't out in the garden where it looks nice. It's absolutely pissing it down out there. Kind of reconfirming my suspicions that it could be quite tricky, this, this, uh, this match. Could be quite tricky by meddling standards, I must admit. Anyway, so let's get to the match. Let's get our pegs drawn. Let's see where we are and let's see if we can catch some fish. Match day and it's here at last. We're back. Going fishing, it's going to be great. A bit miserable on the old weather front though, look at that. Persisting it down. Um, so, camera uh, situation might be a bit interesting, but never mind, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So let's get on the road, let's get to Medlands. It's cold, it's been really cold the last morning too. Um, so I think the fishing could be a bit tougher than maybe we were saying in the old debrief but never mind we'll uh, we'll still have a good day i'm sure but maybe after all the long pole will have to come out to play and uh, maybe have to catch some skimmers but we'll uh, assess the situation when we draw so let's get there it's about a 40 minute drive for me to get to medlands and we will get there with plenty of time hopefully and go and get some pellets so let's get there and uh, get the peg drawn get around and, and see what we're going to do when it comes to uh, getting set up, so see you soon. Well, this is it the beautiful Netherlands fishery, flat calm today, and we're over there on that far bank today. Okay, peg 54. Let's have a little look through the trees. Some silver's topping. There we go, peg 54, and lands down. I don't know if on the end, it's obviously anglers on that bank, I think 52 is in, so we're not on the end, but as you can see, absolutely so shallow in the edge, so I'm going to have to get my box in out there, so, uh, look at that though, looks great doesn't it, so yeah, I think this is going to be a funny day this, so calm isn't it, bombing pellet, 
sharp pole maybe, but I don't know about this edge, it looks very, very shallow. Anyway, let's get some kit out. Looks like I'm on a bit of an end peg here. There's no one in this bay to my right. So, just gonna fish, bomb, waggler, and then probably a short pole. Probably, I'll pull them up the edge and I'll have it in my armory, but it's so shallow. I just don't know if that's gonna lead me to foul looking a lot of fish and just having a general nightmare, so. We'll have a look when I get the plummet on in a minute. But to be honest, I quite fancy a simple match of bomb and then maybe a waggle at times. And then um, a short pole with pellets, to be honest. Wind just started to blow that way. But MPEGs are always good in car matches, so it looks all right to me. Okay, so I've got my fishery pellet, which are just like eight mil coppins with an odd redden in there. And this is what I'm on about, I like to put some oil on and I've got this stuff. Now normally I'd use salmon oil, but a bit cooler, a bit toned down a bit. So this is like pure hemp oil, you see it's green, beautiful stuff. Absolutely top quality stuff this. So I'm just gonna generously apply that. A bit like in the ground bacon. That's my first job. Job for the day. See that they're glazed. They'll soak, soak some of that in, but you want a little bit of loose oil on there so it can drift off, pull the fish. Great. So that's all we've got. We've got some eight mil pellets for feed, for feed and hook bait. We've got some hemp in there. Plenty your hemp. Actually. Nice freshly cut hemp in there. That's looking good. And then I've got a few tins of corn. Various different corns that I had in the uh, back of my van, and that's it. Simple. So I'm going to hemp and corn it down the edge. Pellets on the bomb. Pellets short. Easy as that. It's so 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 shallow. It's three foot deep exactly at five meters. So just not feeling um, long pole. I just don't I feel like a catch on it, but it just seems a bit no man's landish to me. So I've decided to go. Five meters, bomb, and then what I'm going to do? Like I said, I'm going to fish that intercepting style down the edge. So I'm going to to get two foot of water. You've got to be a long way from the bank, and that to me is a nightmare. That's just like foul look city. So, but I still think the fish will want to come in there later on. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to feed like top kit in three sections along the bank. Put loads of bait in there to get them to come in, and then I've plumbed up a rig past it like a meter and a half past it where I'm gonna pot in with just a kinder pot like a few grains of corn and a bit of hemp and that's it and then hopefully they're gonna come in along that bank get to my bait before they get to the payload so that's that's the plan I've got three pole rigs set up two for the edge one for the five meter line and I've got two wagglers up just one's got a six gram float and one's got a three gram float on depending on the wind uh, and then I've got a little 15 gram bomb up and that is it, nice and simple. Um, the only reason I've got three rods up really is because, you know, if you've got them in the bag, you might as well put them up. These big car, you know what I mean, they're so big, it takes two minutes if you think, oh, I'll just need to try a, a, a lighter float, pick the other rod up and chuck it out and you might catch one. So that's it, simple baits, simple, simple rigs and stuff, just strong, simple stuff. Can't wait to get going to be honest, it looks great. So it'd be even better if the wind had been blowing, it's blowing off down there, which that is the better end of the lake normally. But surely with this space here, I've got a chance of pulling some fish. So we'll see, we'll see. And um, there's been a few kicking about, so I think it'd be a slow start and then it'll hopefully just get stronger and stronger as the day goes on. So wouldn't surprise me if I don't catch anything in the first couple of hours to be honest, but that's the nature of these big cart waters and now uh, We'll get we'll get the nets in in a minute and get some bait on the side tray and, and then we'll crack on. OK, 
Okay, almost ready to go. Start on the bomb. Seems like the right thing to do tonight. Oh, I need my thing. So I think it's going to be a slow start today. Personally. Right, that's the all then. And there's just some eight mils out there. Nice little mount. Just gonna get some eights in. Definitely um might just pot a few on the pole actually to start with. There's no rush to get out there. I don't think it's going to be great to start with. Uh, okay. Let's just pot a few in, nice and steady. I'd rather start on something else, but there isn't really anything else to start on. Could probably slap a pellet or something like that, but I think I'm just gonna go on the bomb and try and build it. He's had one already up there. Now, okay, so building this up and hopefully just picking an old fish up on it all day. Okay, so just um, had a little go on the waggler, but fished it on the bottom. I missed the bite, and they're catching quite well to my right on this little bank now. The wind's making that waggle on the bottom difficult. I did miss a bite though. And then I've just chucked the bomb out. Single pelly. And it's gone as I was sinking the line, which is obviously a good sign. It's definitely a carp this, so. Hopefully this is a sign of an odd carp starting to come in. As I was chucking, I felt the rod go in my hand, so that's a good sign. Coming to the noise. It's a bit awkward, this, because obviously it's so shallow. I 
You can try that again. Big fish. So I've got a couple of different little clamps set up. Um, because of the quick change bead I can swap between them so I've got this one here with a size 10 and two bands on it so I can put double pellet on so obviously while I'm fishing I can just I try something that'll do quite a bit so I've got my single pellet on and I'm going to put a sight marker on it like the carpers do like that just a little pink Right. Little pink sight marker on the top. I don't, it's not, it just helps catch their eye, I think. It's not that it's like seeing it up or anything like that, it's literally just a little sight thing. We'll try that next, I'll chuck that out. It's great that doesn't it? Let me look for this. No reason, I just want somewhere else to go at the minute. I'm a five meter line just to see if anything was going on. Skimmer. Bigger now. That's, That's a big fish that.
that was unexpected. Very welcome. Massive fish that. On the short pole. Everything looks good. Maybe I will catch some fish here today. Shut the bomb again. Maybe build that back up a bit. Thinking, why are you coming off that pole? But I just don't want to. Just want to build it up again. Don't really want to be getting bites off ropes. So. Chuck this out. Have another go in another ten minutes. Something that could be happening here. Some fish could be turning up, maybe. Skimmers. I don't. I think they're catching too much on that bank for me to win today. Just don't really kick them. But. I don't know, I just feel like something's going to happen here. Whether I'm catching the edge or. This bomb comes alive. Cap two to my left packed up. The lad to my left had one little skimmer. And then, uh, I don't know, just to me it just feels like maybe something's going to happen here. Oh, go on, son. They're so big. I know it's the same for everyone, so if they cut like seven or eight, it is a, a lot of weight to make up, but I don't know. I'm not. Everyone's moaning, but I'm not.
give it 11 just to be safe. That just shows you. All of a sudden I've got over 40 pound. Check my hook sharp. Yep. As soon as I think that hook's gone, I'll change it. Don't persist with a blunt hook. Just keep checking it in your finger. When you're fishing for these big carp, it's so important to have a sharp one on. Okay, so just uh, add a little look on the pole. And one little indication, but not. To right hand ground, and I'll just chuck the bomb out and it's gone straight round again. It seems like every time I rest it, I get a fish quick, which may just be because of the shallow water and they're just you know taking a bit of encouragement. Fresh hook is a good hook to me. Fishing for a big carp like this, you don't want to be compromising on your setup. Um, what's that? No, that's not the one. Right? Yeah, that's it. Is that it? No. A few moments later. This could be it. Yeah, this is it. 14 to 019. So we've got a nice sharp hook on this time. Again. Single pellet has been the one so far. Let's get rid of these. Sharp up there. There's another quick bite that. So that's our catch up. It's one o'clock, which means we're halfway through. And I reckon I've got 50 pounds. So, 50 pounds, halfway through. Four carp on the bomb, one on the pole, and three skimmers. It's certainly not hectic. Purely because of the size of the fish, I feel like I'm doing all right. And they've got a lot more in that bank, but but I'm happy with how things are going. Because if I can get an arrival in the edge offshore, then I might be all right. Thank you. 
got a red pellet. So I'll try that next. This red pellet. Two reds, in fact. If you want to try it. Let's be up, God. Double red. like a nice, nice hook bait, doesn't it? Two red pellets, decent gap, hook sat, in, sat low like that, that just looks fantastic to me. Love a sharp hook, I think that's gonna, that's gonna be quite nice. are amazing. They fight well, well, you can tell how fast they run because that lead is five or six meters away from the fish. So fast they often run. Oh wait, that was sixty pound. I think that's six fish. So I don't think I've got sixty pound, but obviously fifty-five maybe. Don't like pushing the nets. If I can help it. Nice.
one to my left. The lad chap after him's got one as well. venue unbelievable it's so frustrating no, it's been a bit slow recently it's the point where I was getting a bit worried nothing it was just fading away into nothingness and out of the blue just got one. See how shallow it is out there, because when you hook them, you can actually see them on the top. It must only be three foot deep there. coming that one so very welcome I was thinking my line then. Not far out. Just felt like the wind just got. Thought I might have got one on the wag then, it had like six or seven casts. Took the bomb back in, but maybe there's just not enough water for the waggler. So like I said, I think it's three foot there. Probably too shallow for the wag, to be honest.
the bullet. I've got 80 pounds. a cap in the edge. To do for the best to just stick on this bomb but even that's not great at the minute but then when I chuck the bomb even that's not going now so you moaned him off <laughs> going on about what they've got in the nets because they've got so many nets in over there so it just tells you how good the fishing is over there today maybe I just should just stick on this now until the end small fish for today this
got to stay on this on until the end. Could be foul like that, it feels weird. Feels weird this one. got 35 minutes to go. There's an odd fish on the bomb now. Definitely feeding time. on the edge though. Mental. Where did they come from? Down the edge. I mean, what time is it? <laughs> Eight minutes to go. I 
classic big car. All that time, lose it. Well, bad day today, guys. Bad day. Not on the match front. On it is Sunday evening. Manchester United have just been absolutely mullered by Manchester City, and I'm feeling a bit depressed. But we've got this match roundup to do, so no worries. The mug. I've not smashed it up yet, but it was close today but I've got to keep winding you up with the mug, so I'm going to hang on to it. But yeah, absolute pathetic performance from the red lot. Anyway, um, my match. So we ended up with £116, which was a lovely day's fishing. Um, all but one of my fish was caught on the bomb, which was brilliant. I love fishing like that. It can be aggressive, feeding loads of pellets, keep changing your hook baits, keep changing your hook lengths, keep casting, and eventually it came good. Now... I said in my pre-match thing about the fish being a nightmare to catch in the edge and I messed up totally here. I mean, right, let's just say Martin Payne won the match with £216. I think John Webb was second with £214. Then John Adamson, who was third, had uh, £160. Now, they were all three anglers in a line on the pump bank. So on the opposite side, um, where the water was a bit deeper, the wind was off the back. It just, I was, we were like with our hoods up and stuff and I looked across and they've got t-shirts on. Um, just loving it in the sun and obviously where I was it was cold and like I say the guy too to my left actually packed up after an hour it was just it was like a totally different lake where we were so then they were the top three and then I was fourth so not not an outrageously bad result or anything like that it's nice obviously to come fourth but it's just a, it's just frustrating because you know you can see the fish and that but anyway 116 pound great days fishing so in hindsight I maybe could have just gone to this match with a bomb rod and that would have been it. I'd, I'm, I'd have, I think I'd have probably caught more if I'd have just took a bomb rod with me. That being said, in the early going, I did catch fish every time I rested it. Quick fish as well, like I'd rest it, give it 20 minutes, try the pole or whatever, go back on it and catch a carp really quickly. So having somewhere else to go would have been, would have been ideal and probably nicked a few fish. The only thing I, I think I probably could have done is fish a, a method. Maybe at like, I don't know, maybe long pole range, 13 metres, something like that. Or maybe just chucked it out like 40 metres. And maybe I would have caught a few fish, especially in the early few hours when the bomb was slow. And that maybe if I'd have just fished that for two hours, say, uh, and, and caught like three carp on it, that might have been really good because it would give me a bit longer to... To, to sort of build my bomb swim up. It was, it was obvious that when I started my match, I had nowhere to really start. I started on the bomb, but I always knew it was gonna take an hour or so to get going. So that was a bit of a mistake. I needed somewhere else to go. Maybe I could have fished with skimmers on the pole for that first hour, but I think a method maybe just chucked well past on its own, just leaving it out there, might have got me a few fish, but that's, that's all hindsight. The edge was so shallow, and it was exactly as I described in my pre-match thing. It's like a beach, it just comes up like that to, so like no water, it was like that deep right in the edge and then just so gradual and I, I they did come in in the end, uh, last certainly the last 10 minutes there was quite a lot of carp in the edge. I hooked one, lost it which really annoyed me but it was, it was frustrating because I kept getting, you know what it's like, you see one carp in the edge and you get distracted by it and the reality is it's one carp when there could be 10 on your bomb line, but because it's shallow and you can see them swirling around, it looks like there's loads, but the reality is there's not. Even at the end when I was packing up, there was loads of carp in the edge, but when I actually sat there waiting for the scales to come around and watched them, it was like four fish. So it's no wonder they're hard to catch when there's only a couple actually coming in. Um, so in hindsight, I wouldn't have even set any edge rigs up, but obviously being on an MPEG, I was tempted because I thought I could catch like 10 down there, which 
is well over hundred pound at this venue. Um, but in hindsight, I shouldn't have even set it up. I caught one carp at top five, which was a big and a fifteen pounder. And I'm sure if I'd have just kept just that rig, maybe, and the bomb, I would have definitely caught two or three carp on the on the five meters. He caught three next to me on it. Um, that would have been a better option than fishing the edge, to be honest. But like I say, I got giddy and <laughs> drawn into it. Um, so yeah, so there you go. Great day. Got some lovely big fish. Really, really good fishing. The bites are amazing. The fights was amazing. Everything was good. I just probably made a few mistakes. Could I have got to third place, 160 pound? It would have been a big ask, but it's another five or six fish. Maybe if I could have caught two or three on the method in the first hour, I'd have probably caught some short late on. Um, even if I'd have stuck on the bomb for that last 15, 20 minutes or so when I tried the edge, I'd have probably caught another couple. So yeah, it sounds a lot a big gap, 50 pound, but it's not really when you're talking with fish like this. Definitely couldn't have won. That was a big ass, but I, I think I could have probably got third if I'd just been a bit smarter. I was a bit slow with my decision making um, when it comes to like big carp fishing because it's been so long since I've done any of that. But that's something I'm going to really concentrate on, I think, next year because I really enjoyed the fishing and it, it's obvious that I'm a bit rusty with that kind of thing. Um, I'm all right once I get going, get, get catching fish and stuff. It's just decision making. You know, you watch guys like Andy Power and stuff. They're constant, like Powers is constantly moving. He's moving about, he's switching lines, he's trying different things, but with purpose, he's not doing it on a whim. I felt like I was picking the waggler up on a bit of a whim every now and again, going short because I felt like I should, rather than having an actual purpose for doing so. So lots to work on for me anyway, and uh, it's getting a bit cold now, so there won't be many more chances for me to get, to get back out doing any proper carp fishing, but come next spring, um, I will be back on it, I definitely. That's going to be my little project next summer. Catch some carp on some fisheries, Medlands, Makings, places like that, Barston. I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to make that my little summer project next year. Put the F1s on the back burner for another summer um, and, and do a bit of that sort of fishing because it's really enjoyable, especially when you're catching them on the rod and line and stuff. So, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. Um, I've got a busy few weeks ahead. I'm going out to the World Championships on Thursday, uh, Wednesday. I'm going to cover that for the Press Innovations Facebook. So by the time this video is live, I will be there. So keep an eye on the Facebook page, Press Innovations, for live updates on the Feeder World Championships. Um, and then I've got a real busy little spell of work and stuff. So my next match is, is going to be a few weeks away, unfortunately. But we'll try and get one in. We'll try and get something in. Um, and then we'll get uploaded but we'll do some other videos in the meantime and uh, thank you everyone for watching.